Hello, contrarians, watchers, contrarians, listeners, anybody that happened to stumble upon this video. You saw Original Sin on the title and you're like, sure, let's see, maybe we get to catch a glimpse of Antonio Banderas and Angelina Jolie doing something they shouldn't. Going at it. Yeah. Something they should, based on the story and the, the way it's portrayed, they seem very good at it. In reality, it's something that needed to happen. If anything, that's, that's the one reason Original Sin exists, is just so that we can we can have that to reference forever just kind of like perfection when it comes to sex yes original sin we are doing the warm-up video for the uh podcast episode that we just did on it uh rotten movie so that means that we said really nice things about it in contrarian's corner and then we told you how we really feel quite rotten quite rotten. uh although it has some uh some interesting defenders in the mm -hmm. critic community Roger Ebert being one. Yeah. <laughs> if you want the, the Ebert quotes, that's in the episode. But here we have some other quotes from uh, people that didn't like it. Rotten quotes. So we're going to give you that. We're going to give you a little bit of extra trivia. And, of course, we're going to cast Josh Gad in Original Sin as part of the Josh Gad Minute. So buckle up. Alex, we're going to start with the quotes. Judith Prescott from The Hollywood Reporter, who says, The combination of a smoldering Banderas and a simmering Jolie generates as much heat as a 40-watt bulb. That seems low wattage for a... Uh... What's Mr. Burns say? 60 watts? What do you think this is? A tanning salon? <laughs> uh, even in the description, this, uh, this critic, Judith, is acknowledging that Banderas is smoldering and Jolie is simmering. So she's saying that they are uh, they cancel each other with their hotness? Uh, I guess, yeah, because obviously the implication is that they, they aren't hot together on screen, which I disagree with. Of all the things this movie has wrong with it, their chemistry to me is not one of them. Can you think off the top of your head of uh, two hot people that were not hot together in a movie? Hmm... Yes, but it's late, and so it's going to take me longer to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all of you watching, just throw it in the comments. Yeah. Uh, attractive people that somehow stop being attractive when they're together. That sounds like an episode of a podcast that's not ours. Elizabeth Berkeley and Kyle MacLachlan are both really good looking, but they are like Gina Gershon also, but there is nothing sexy about them in that movie. <laughs> Showgirls, that is. Kind of an obvious pick, but I hadn't even thought about it. I just, mm. I try not to think about showgirls. So thank you. There you go. Don't put showgirls on the comments now. It's taken. Did um, McConaughey and Kate Hudson have good chemistry? In which movie? At they've all, because done... they made like three movies together, right? Or two, at least two. Oh man, that Fool's Gold movie is terrible. So, <laughs> But are they that. hot together? It could be a bad movie and they could still be hot together. Yeah, but hot people sometimes don't have chemistry. Hot people in general don't... Just because they're hot doesn't mean they're going to be sexy. Or, like, um, smoldering. Or, you know, really enticing. So, Can you remake Original Sin with uh, Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey? Please do, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, next... Next quote, Thor Thorson from Real.com says, Christopher packs so many foreboding clues into the first half hour that a blind, deaf, and illiterate Swahili speaker could sense there's something amiss. It's yeah. a bit hyperbolic there, but yeah, it's uh, one of the things we talk about in the episode is like the first half of the movie is teetering on being campy fun. And then that goes away. But yeah, of course, it's like, it didn't seem like it was a movie that was made to be subtle. And I mean that in like, every extreme of the expression also i mean we're we're seeing it as 21st century people and to us it's very obvious that something is amiss as, as the critic says but mm -hmm. Antonio Banderas is playing a man from the early 1900s so he doesn't know he doesn't know yeah. what gaslighting means <laughs> he doesn't know about catfishing people were still naive and innocent back in those days yeah, he, simpler he, times for uh, at least. Um, what does he do? He runs a coffee, a coffee shop, an early Starbucks, a Cuban yes. Starbucks. He truly believes the Tinder profile, doesn't question it at all, and that's that's fine. It's we can question it for him. That's the whole point of the movie. Got to look for the verified little check mark. That <laughs> he does didn't not. Even, didn't even think to do that. He is. He clicks on every link that Angelina Jolie sends. Yes. Oh, 
I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> Next, uh, James Lotek from Jam Movies. This is Jam with an exclamation mark. It's the kind of movie you'd throw a video party around with drinking games involving, say, a chug every time Banderas tells his wife to find out what she's really up to. I mean, uh, that happens like twice, but yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Alex? I definitely agree with the notion of this being a party movie. Original Sin uh, party coming up? Well, you know, it's not like you have the, the party themed around it, but it's definitely a movie that like I could see you and I the type of parties that you and I attend together this being on in the background and like pointing being like oh yeah this is where this happens and I mean you uh, own this movie I do so technically you, you could just anytime you want you can just in the middle of a in between wrestling matches you could have a TV that's playing uh, <laughs> original sin I should add it's football season, so I have three TVs set up right now, and I should just add an additional monitor to have original sin going at all times. On a loop, like at, at an old video store like Best Buy when they would just have you know the day after tomorrow or some shit on loop. Yeah, just the idea that uh, at any given point you can just look away and suddenly look at find yourself staring at Antonio Banderas's naked body as he goes or, to town. Um, Thomas, Thomas Jane. Jane, yeah, twirling his mustache. <laughs> All right. Sounds like a party. And finally, Stephen Macy from Ottawa Citizen says, unless John Travolta has a sequel to Battlefield Earth up his sleeve or Kevin Costner has a new project in the works, they might as well hand out the Golden Raspberry Awards right now. Alex, the Travolta thing doesn't surprise me because, I mean, Battlefield Earth is just widely known as a failure right like that that is like a, oh, yeah. kind of a punchline throwing kevin costner under the bus that way <laughs> i think it's Dude, very specific yeah, like to... well first of all original sin is better than battlefield earth um is but it then, better like, than death is his wolves <laughs> well i think that's supposed to be some sort of dig at like uh the postman right or water world probably both because water world water world you know possible hot take i think water world fox i think that movie's dope but uh it lost a ton of money it was like a huge bomb and it, it is really silly we do we do talk about in the episode i don't have it right in front of me here but she angelina jolie did get nominated for a golden raspberry for this it was a dual nomination for her uh her role in this as uh julia russell and then also her role as laura croft in uh tomb raider haters but it, this was the year that freddie got fingered came out so that kind of dominated the the field at the golden raspberries well, I, I don't know how many times, if ever, uh, Kevin Costner has been nominated, but I still think that, especially because it's not like, I mean, yeah, Waterworld and, and even The Postman to an extent, yeah, they're well-known failures, but not in the sense that they derail a career. You know, like Costner has done stuff that has gotten critical acclaim since. So oh, yeah. this is just, I feel like that quote was just written at that specific moment that he was just he hadn't quite hit the the upside again uh don't worry kicking a man while he's down yeah yeah he, he can you imagine him reading that quote and going like my god they're comparing me with travolta right now that's how bad it is <laughs> where did it all go wrong man yeah uh all right well those are the quotes now before we go to trivia alex josh gad is waiting for us it's a josh gad minute where it's pretty obvious i think really yeah Thomas Jane? Yep. He's... <laughs> you have uh, Walter Down slash Billy slash Mephesto. Just have Josh Gad come in there, put a little suit on him, give him a mustache, give him a gun. Uh, add that, like, wrinkle of sexual ambiguity to it. And, I mean, you could also have him... Replace, I think the guy's name was Jack Thompson, the the friend oh, of no. Antonio Banderas. No, I mean, but... yes, you could, but from you already, you already threw like the best option up there. I was gonna say, if you if you want to get the most, the most bang for your buck, the most sizzle on your steak, you, you have uh, Thomas Jane just sit this one out and wait for the Punisher in a couple years, and then you put. Uh, and we get Josh Gad, Gad uh, making out, out with, with Antonio the... Banderas. Banderas, <laughs> yeah. Man, I, mean, I don't see how we can go wrong. The world, it, back in, what is this, 2001 when this movie came out? Yeah. 
Yeah, back in 2001, I know that the world was ready for a Josh Gad and Gina Jolie sex scene, but we've we've grown since then. 2023, yeah, we could do it. Probably get he's a, Yeah, by now he's a a Disney icon, and she's a an accomplished filmmaker. <laughs> there you go. It's time. It's time for them to come together. Changeling with Josh Gad playing the little boy in it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. Josh Gad's going to have sex with Angelina Jolie and flirt a lot with Tony Banderas. There we go. You're all God, welcome. The dream. Now, Alex, take us to trivia. All right. So the famous slash infamous sex scene in this movie is covered in painstaking detail in the actual episode. So sorry to titillize, but you're not going to get any of that here. Uh, but I do recommend checking out the episode because we do go in uh, pretty deep on it. Um, so much so that the original cut of the movie was too much, even for an NC-17 rating. And then uh, just the ins and outs, no pun intended, of what went into the making of that scene. Original Sin was released initially. It premiered in France. On July 11th, 2001, and then we didn't even talk about this in the episode, August 3rd of 2001. So it had a good, what is that, five weeks at the box office before everything went to hell. That's all it needed. Uh, during that time, it amassed a box office return of uh, a little bit over $35 million. This coming off an estimated budget of between 26 and $42 million. It was rumored that the chemistry between Jolie and Banderas led to a relationship, which they denied. As I mentioned, the film had to be cut to achieve an R rating, which the director, Michael Christopher, called censorship. <laughs> okay, calm down. He was, yeah, he was very bummed about this. It was the last film produced under Michelle Pfeiffer's production company, Via Rose Productions. I mentioned this in the episode, but it does tickle me pink. Original Sin is based on Mississippi Mermaid, which is a french romance film from the 60s which starred catherine denier and uh, jean paul belmondo directed by francois truffat and that is based off of waltz into darkness by william irish now the reason i bring this up is because it, they were going to call the movie original sin waltz into darkness but then they changed it to avoid potential confusion with dancer in the dark which is a wonderful wonderful lars von trier film uh <laughs> But you don't get to hear that very often. Yes. No. <laughs> Wonderful and Lars von Trier don't go together usually. I do love the idea, though, that there was real confusion about that as though people wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> the crushingly depressing musical starring Bjork and the, the fucking erotic thriller with Angelina Jolie. But Julio, as you and I have experienced on numerous occasions, both individually and together, the movie going public ain't that bright, and they probably would have confused the two of them. It's very likely. I think that uh, they would even convince themselves that Angelina Jolie and Jork, uh, they look similar. <laughs> uh, who's who, who's uh, the main actor in uh, uh, Dancer in the Dark? Oh, fuck. What's that guy's name? David Morse. Okay. So, He's... you know, he has a face just like Antonio Banderas. Pretty much. Different accent, but that's it. Yeah, Angelina Jolie's probably three feet taller than Bjork and uh, of completely separate nationalities. But hey, you and I, back in the day, Julio had to give out just a, an endless amount of refunds for the artist because people didn't know that it was a silent film mm. or in black and white. So. Now, Lars von Trier directing his own version of Original Sin. <laughs> it's called Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So same parts, but it's Lars von Trier. Is that what you're proposing? Here? Yeah, yeah. Oof. Banderas just quits Hollywood after that. It's like, no, thank you. Yeah, obviously, Von Trier is, uh, I think we can just call him a douchebag, and that's letting him get off easy in the, this situation. But his films definitely have a, a feeling to them, and you got to wonder what Angelina Jolie would have done. But she seems also like she would just tell him to go fuck himself if he, if he tried that shit of like bullying and whatnot. Uh, so, anyway. This is not the Lars von Trier hour. He, he can go pack sand. Julio, I mentioned this was uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's production company. Uh, we talk about this briefly in the episode itself, but Michelle Pfeiffer was originally intended to star in this as the uh, Julia role. However, she opted out to serve as a producer. How dramatically does it change the dynamics of this movie if it's Michelle Pfeiffer and instead of Angelina Jolie? I mean... 
Uh, we, in the episode itself, talk about one of the r- rare successes of this movie is Angelina Jolie and how just commanding she is, her presence is. Michelle Pfeiffer in the same situation. You think, would that give it more of a dramatic flair? Would it make it more kind of um, uh, inviting and accessible? Because, you know, she's Catwoman. We know Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> what, what, what do you think her involvement here? And it's still Antonio Banderas, still Thomas Jane, but Michelle Pfeiffer is our, uh, our flame, our muse in this. How, how dramatically do you think it changes it? I don't know if it's the the persona that we associate with Angelina Jolie now or the persona that we associate with Michelle Pfeiffer, maybe both things. Maybe it's just my own, I guess, close-mindedness when it comes to their range. I think it's when you cast Angelina Jolie, then you she's enigmatic. So you don't trust her, I think, the way that Banderas shouldn't trust her. Right, that's what that early quote was saying. Like, oh, it's so obvious that there something is afoot, right? <laughs> but Darius doesn't get it because he's in this story and he's stunned, spell, uh, spellbound by her beauty. But, but we do. If you put Michelle Pfeiffer there, I think that I'll be more likely to doubt myself and go, well, maybe she's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she is everything that 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 she should be and maybe Banderas is the evil one or maybe there's somebody else pulling the strings you know like I I think that I'm more likely to believe her just because she has she projects more innocence whereas Angela Jolie she projects more I don't know cunning I don't know maybe it's just the roles that we associate them with you know could be I mean would, Angelina Jolie her look was a, a massive thing because it is I mean she was salt <laughs> Jesus uh, th- this is a better movie than Salt. She just so enigmatic, and she always seems like she's withholding. You know, she mm-hmm. she she was like in some ways the female Michael Keaton of eyebrow acting. You know, she just had those <laughs> eyebrows and those obviously her big lips was something she was known for, and just the faces she could make. It's like, oh man, she she knows some shit. She's not telling me or Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Even okay, so what's the most duplicitous most twisted michelle pfeiffer role that you can think of right but even then like what hairspray yeah <laughs> like... Catwoman or hairspray but even like as Catwoman, she starts off as an innocent and then when she becomes Catwoman, she's very open about who she is christopher walken throws her out of a window yeah exactly uh and then i mean hairspray it's just again it's very there's nothing hidden about that performance you can tell that she's you know She's bad. So if she shows up in Cuba and tells Antonio Banderas, yeah, I'm sorry I lied to you because I wanted people to want me for something other than me being hot, I buy it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You were in Dangerous yeah. Liaisons. John Malkovich treated you very badly. You deserve some you're, happiness. You're in Greece too. Again, another, you know, she's, she wears her heart in her sleeve. That's a good point. She was a cool writer. And in, and in closing... Uh, just to get my dig in, the plantation house in this movie was a real sugarcane plantation manor that they found abandoned for shooting. As opposed to now, you know where I'm going with this. It would just be an empty warehouse with a bunch of fucking green like uh, <laughs> tapestry and curtains hanging about. Eh, uh, just, just fake it. Uh, Banderas and Jolie wouldn't even have like they wouldn't be in the same room when they were shooting the sex scenes. <laughs> yeah, Banderas just... would be grinding against a green screen, and <laughs> Jolie, Jolie would be Banderas, lying. Like, on a, on not a even nude. Uh, they just like CG or like AI a naked body, and then just like MS Paint like uh, chest hair on him. It's always so funny to talk about movies like this. That uh, and you you'll get the full breakdown in the episode. Uh, so we do encourage you to check it out. How just a big, dumb, loud, salacious, you know, bordering on salacious movie like this was treated like with the same like, you know, vigor as like Goodfellas of like, we have to find the right shooting location for this. That's obviously something that that's kind of my MO. Uh, one of my main calling cards is lamenting that we don't make movies like that anymore. Um we don't make movies like this at all, but the fact that so many major studio releases now are just like, uh, we'll shoot it in Atlanta just in this warehouse and it'll be all right. That original sin, they're like, all right, 
we have to go to Spain. We have to find these plantations to film it at. Uh, it, it adds to some of its charm. And the actors have to be all in the same in room. Yes. Everybody. like <laughs> <laughs> They have to all come over together. They each get their own hotel room. <laughs> Original Sin is uh, an interesting discussion, and it's a, a fun discussion that we have in a movie that can't even really say peaks and valleys. There's like momentary promise, and then we find the the bottom falling out. But it, it's a snapshot of a period in time, and it's something that Hulu and I both um, got a lot out of, surprisingly. So uh, if you enjoy this video, which you should, give props to our boy Corey, but uh, like it and then subscribe to the Contrarians YouTube channel and leave us a comment. Have you seen Original Sin? Do you fuck with it? Is it a campy classic for you? Or uh, <laughs> Do you have it playing in the background at your parties, <laughs> like that guy suggested? Yeah. And also, I reiterate the question, who are like hot people that are not hot together? Like that other critic alluded what do you to. what do you mean by that like in like the, the opposite the... the opposite of what happens in this movie in this movie antonio when is super hot angelina jolie is super hot and when they're together it's just a supernova of hotness but <laughs> yeah there have to be instances where that doesn't happen where yeah. like attractive people star in a film together and it just doesn't work it's like ooh. right it's like this should be titillating but it's not and I, I mean, you're not far off with that uh, Elizabeth Berkeley, Kyle MacLachlan. Uh, uh, Michael Fassbender, hottie. Uh -huh. Carrie Mulligan, hottie. Uh huh. That scene in Shame where she's naked and he's just like standing in front of her. Of course, the context of it makes it. I was about to say, <laughs> context is but, everything. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, two hot people there on the screen at the same time, and it just it ain't doing it, man. Okay, so the hot people are not they shouldn't be related in the movie i can't believe that i have to specify that but no like get rid of that aspect and just regular people playing people that are not siblings um, they're ha yeah they're uh, again this is something that i'm going to be kicking myself at three in the morning when i figure out my answer but i, I know there's got to be tons especially from like the 80s and uh, 90s of failed rom-coms where they have just like you know it's obviously the idea behind this but a lot of movies was just like well they're good looking so just put them together and it'll be fine ryan reynolds and blake lively and green lantern well but they don't really have a sex scene or oh right? okay so we're, we're still keeping it in the bounds of like there needs to be like some sort of intimacy okay I mean, they don't have to go like as hard as original sin but you know <laughs> if you, if you do Watch Original Sin if you want to. Listen to the episode for sure. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to the channel. Leave us a comment. Do all that stuff. And then coming up next, uh, we swing to the other side of the tomato meter. Erin Brockovich. It's fresh. It got Julia Roberts an Oscar. So, of course, we're going to nitpick it to death. Uh, that's coming up soon. Aaron Eckhart's uh, a biker. Yeah. Speaking of hot people, I don't know there what the chemistry is like in that movie. We're... We'll have to read this. Maybe circling that. back to this conversation. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching this, and we'll talk to you again soon.